Hello and welcome to Knights of the Blackwater. I am Ben. Today we have the fifth round of Swiss from the uh, Battles of Summerhall 3. On the left we have Lewis uh, Woodhouse playing Lannister Crossing. And on the right we have Matt Chandler, who you, you may remember from Decklist and Chill, playing, uh, the, uh, playing the Free Folk. Once again, as always, I will be ignoring the house when you see Free Folk, because it does not matter and it annoys me that it does not matter. <laughs> <laughs> We're on to setups, and we have a Rose Road, Dahlia, and a Crow Killers against um, Sher uh, a Great Hall, and I've completely blanked the name, Shay, there we go, and uh, I think that is that's a launch, the one that when the opponent has three or less characters, you gain renowned, obviously, a knight, so it's a, it's a launch, I want to say, yes, so I'm a, so I'm a launch, I was correct. All good. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, this is the last round of Swiss after we go to cut to top eight, and unfortunately, this one has some bad news. Uh, I've got the top eight game, but unfortunately, the semi-final and final uh, did not record properly. The files were corrupted, and I was not able to save them. So, um, yeah, kind of a bit annoyed about that, but uh, never mind. We've still got some good games to go. So, um, as far as we know, both these chaps are free and one at the moment. Um, it's definitely win and you're definitely in, lose and you're at the mercy of uh, strength of schedule. We're on to first plots. We have uh, a we have trading the Bentoshi into. I can't see what that is. I'm going to guess by how much gold he takes. I have a feeling it might be winter reserves because I think that was a common theme with the debt with the list um, on the day. So so see how much gold he takes. I see the last of the giants in hand. A pretty good card in there. As you might see, I did try some free folk out on a live stream. You can check that out in the video, I think about a week ago or so, if you're watching this as it goes up. Um, yeah, quite quite a one-dimensional deck. I'm not a massive fan, but it's something that you know you can you can make up and it doesn't really affect your card pool. So uh, it's something for testing, I think it's always worth having made up. Right, we have a Great Hall play that we have the Great Hall Nelt. And we're gonna see of all that gold, do you think it's gonna be someone big? There's a hound in hand here, be quite useful to try and sort these militaries. It's going to be Queen Cersei. So straight in there with the, uh, straight in there with the, uh, with the, with the big, with the big body who um, obviously makes a big difference when it comes to all these horrible, horrible oppressive board state uh, plays you're going to be having coming from Matt's side. A deep one Shea, again that will be fairly useful. I believe that is Winter Reserves there, so the turn one isn't going to be too bad. Uh, winter Reserves though, can be a bit of a uh, nombo with um, Crow Killers though, because obviously you... I don't know, does this printed reserve or just your reserve? Because if it's just your reserve, your reserve well, obviously it gives you plus one reserve. So that would be worse. Let me have a quick look at Crow Killers. Now this has come to my mind. So that is a fair chunk of gold, so that does, I believe this is Winter Reserve. Yeah, it just says revert, it does say Printer Reserve value, so yeah, that it could be a bit of a number with them. On turn one, they will be kneeling, because uh, obviously tra uh, trading with the Pintoshi has got quite a low reserve. We have a second Crow Killers. You have a spear wife. And I think he might be passing. D uh, I did, did not see. Do you remember to draw a card, Dahlia? Oh, and I did miss. We had also the King's Rope into play. So, on to the challenges from the Lanny Crossing. I really hope he's given that hound in hand to try and save from all this military. 
to me this seems you, yeah you just do the intrigue with Cersei and then you do uh, potentially power of shame then stand her and then potentially leave it at that maybe don't even do the power you'll be able to try and survive all these attacks and that uh, does look like yes it has got unimposed claim is going to be um, one of my favourite cards in the deck which is the um, was it the weirwood bow uh, just helps getting the challenges through and also have the power put on Cersei because a card is discarded from your opponent's hand one of the reasons she is so good <laughs> and yeah, Matt did forget the trigger on Dahlia. He had actually just said, "I I have forgotten the um, I forgotten the um, you said forgotten there." So we have JB Anderson with Hear Me Raw. Now I did see some comments in the last video. Um, I actually will be honest, I haven't double checked, but I believe they said that um. Lewis's deck was actually illegal because uh, he had two restricted cards in the deck. Um, I believe that was a genuine mistake from him. Um, so, um, I, you know, he, he's a very nice guy. I can't imagine him doing that deliberately. So uh, it's a shame. It does happen when you have restricted lists. Uh, you know, these things are easy enough done. Um, but, um, yeah. Yeah. So we've got military coming in from Jamie here as he's brought in to play from and I believe Hear Me Roy is one of the cards on the restricted list. I'm gonna be honest, until someone told me, I, I couldn't remember. That's gonna make this military hard to get through as well. And so Crow Killers are gonna defend and be killed. So this is um, this is quite a good start here actually from Lewis. Power challenge. Power challenge from launch. I guess also you can now kill Jamie from the military from any military claim, and you don't really care because you bought him for nothing. So you've got so that power goes challenge is unopposed. You've got crossing. So we have the uh, crossing, the unopposed, and the renown on uh, launch because there is now three or less characters. So we have a military, which I believe now she has stealth because um, there's more power on the opponent's house card. So I'm not massively up on some of these wildlings. But that's where we can see the hound jumping into play. Um, yeah, where well, you have less power on your faction card is you get they gain stealth. So the hound comes in, fully blocks the challenge, and then gets back to hand. So it doesn't look like Matt's going to get too much through this turn. <laughs> Intrigue from the Crow Killers, which are having to nil because of, say, because of uh, said reserve issues. And Jamie's going to oppose that. Uh, which then leads to the power, which isn't really going to do much. Um, fully block it would be fully blocked from Cersei and Dom was. Oh, Dom, they might not. There's gold there for Matt. So you go for Matt. So Dom would be a tie. Would slow this Lancer deck down if he did. Because one of the other things here is the uh, Wildlings tend not to run a reset. So if you can get a pretty impressive board out early, they don't really have many options. Yeah, they rely on their reset and that they just kill everything, so they don't need a reset. <laughs> um, 
Right, and this good trailer power, which is going to be placed between Cersei, as said, and then Dom's going to be a tie. Probably the right thing to do there, just to try and slow him down. You don't want him getting another power, which obviously would put would keep up to six because Jamie's now discarded. So at five zero after turn one, pretty good start. The kind of start you want against this wildling these wildling decks, because I say if they can wipe your board turn one, you're pretty much fighting an uphill struggle. And so yeah, I am not nice say pretty sure that was winter reserve there, but we won't know because there's no claim. Hopefully, I might hear a tri I might hear them talk about it uh, for the next uh, one of the next plots. So we have looks like famine into heads and spikes. And Matt gets he gets the last of the giants, so no power from the plot. Uh, so let's see if that makes a difference. But there is still a Cersei trigger, which kind of makes you feel less bad when you don't hit a character. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll be first. Uh, so uh, Lewis decides to be first, obviously um, with Famine and the Hound in Hand. It'd be interesting if he actually does play out any characters. To a four, so we've got a Western Fiefdoms. So let's say it's going to bring the hound out normally. Now that I'm not going to and a dupe. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, that seems like a slight misplay in my for me personally. Um, because you have the um, because you've got the stealth now on the board, you can just stealth past the hound. And yes, indeed that indeed that was Winter Reserve's turn one because. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thanks to uh, Lou. Um, Lou, he's now just kind of gone. I just want to double check <laughs> why you've got four gold. So we have another road road played out. So economy's not going to be an issue for the Wildling deck this time. We've also got that King's Road. So potential, potentially could have a big character hitting the board. Two members is uh, Dahlia Trigger. And we have a weirwood bow put out. So just explain what it does there. It's a pretty pretty good card to say it does help get these challenges through. It also can help get unopposed, which can be pretty 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 pretty, pretty brutal. And we have one goal to put a Nightmares. I didn't see what that Nightmares was on. Oh, we must be into challenges, I imagine. So I think that Nightmares was on um, Cersei. Oh, so that's the lovely old Tart Nightmares. Two goal to play Last of the Giants. 
to bring in. I can't remember his name, but he's pretty damn good. I think it's, is it one? One one? Yeah, one one. Um, has no icons, uh, no attached to weapons. Uh, kneel him to ha action. Kneel him to have him participating in a challenge with a uh, where, where you have a participating, participating wilding character. So he's also strength eleven and currently has intimidate because of last of the giants. So he's going to die at the last end of the turn. And there's something quite actually thematic about the last of the giants playing in a giant. Um, so I think there's going to get a challenge through this turn. With the Weirwood Bow and that, this could be pr a pretty good and uh, an impressive turn. And the stealth, yeah, so the military should get through. You go in stealth for hound and you can use the... Uh, with. Obviously, you see what, obviously they've still got to attack first. So you have a military challenge coming in from the hound. So, um, Lewis falling into the, uh, I don't want to say trap of crossing decks, but that kind of like, I'm going to do my challenges, I'm going to do all three of them, I don't care what your board state is, kind of mentality. It's going to go unopposed. Who's going to be taking this claim? Yeah, I'm just especially keeping track of the fourth reaction and I'm deciding whether to discard a card at random from my hand or to use a, a dupe to save the hound. So, Lewis is just deciding whether to use a force reaction to save the to keep the dupe on the board or just use the dupe to stop the hand from dancing back to hand. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, sorry, oh, that one myself. I think you probably want the dupe on the board. Depends how good your hand is, obviously. So he's going to take the dupe off, so that could be big if these two militaries go through. We have a reaction to winning, which is going to be another a Tyrion's chain to trigger heads and spikes again. Nope, I'm just frozen. And it's the um, was it the gates of the moon? Okay, and then I get a and a and then wait. So, just what the claim's going to be here? Because if you're going to kill one of the military icons, you might as well defend it with them. You know, you might as well defend it with that spear wife, really. That's an interesting one. I'd put the crow killers are the best character on the board right now because they are. Um... Oh, I shall wonder if they are because heads and spikes. I think might only be reserved five, so the crow killers might have to def um, might have to kneel to attack. He's going to take the spear wife, so I said might as well defend it. No, heads and spikes reserve six. The crow killers do currently do not kneel currently, so it makes them, in my mind, a better card uh, to keep on the board. Because they get, getting two challenges out of them is pretty, pretty good, especially you go first and you can uh, attack twice and then defend a the challenge as well. So we have um, we have Shay coming for challenge. Mm -hmm. 
And Cade's going to be a milk of the poppy, and that goes unopposed. Okay, and there's the San Shay. We're going for the power challenge. Probably imagine Shay's going into the power challenge. And indeed, Shay is. Keep these high strength characters up to make it hard to get these challenges through. And so opposed and crossing. So uh, Lewis now up to ten power already in two turns. So you've got to hope something happens here. Otherwise, I think it could be quite a tough. Um, could be quite a tough uh, old game here for for Matt, especially when he come back. So we're both going to come in here to help the um, help this challenge go through. <laughs> I've got intrigue coming in here from the uh, Wildling Scouts, and obviously, also, and obviously, the Hound and the Copy Dupuche was taken off the claim. Cersei comes into the fend. It's just that he didn't use one one there to come in and uh, def join the military to use the intimidate. So we've got the unopposed military power coming in, taking two power, needing the house card to choose military again, which is going to kill Shay and you'd imagine launch. To claim yet and launch. And right like that, although Lewis is still on. Um, is still on te nine power, and yet one one's uh, killed killed for the still on nine power. Obviously, the fact that uh, he's had down to one character already. That's why I really think he should have kept that hound dupe on the table. I really think that was a misplay there. Uh, Matt takes Dom, and we're up to uh, nine two four. Yeah, I think potentially this is this turn. The next turn's gonna be pivotal. To be pivot, pivotal, because Lewis needs to get enough. Uh, Lewis needs to get enough gold here, uh, and I hope he's got some cards to hand to flood the board again to take another one of these beatings from the wildlings. Um, he could potentially heads on spikes go first. If he hits with heads on spikes, oh, there's no cards in hand. There's no point in heads on spiking actually, is there? Just complete relying on the top decking. Um, if he. Yeah, we've got for Force March into... I can't see what that is. I hope we reverse that in a minute. And uh, Lucy's going to go first. So Force March there. B uh, Bows the Croker. That's probably a good move there. Cersei can still come and do an Intrigue. And... Seems, I think that's a lot of economy in uh, Lewis's hand. In Matt's hand, sorry. So four gold... You've got the, you got the two cards there. Is there anything, anything, any two econ locations? Anything you can get out here to help him? Got one gold here for another great hall. 
really need to look out to hit the board here, as I think this is game over. Looks like we've got something. Six cost character. Uh, Jamie Lannister, right. So now we've at least got two characters that do not kneel to attack, so that can put some pressure on. And one gold not spent. One gold was going to be spent, but then wasn't. They go for flea bottom. So I believe this is where the issue is because the flea bottom and um, I believe it's the flea bottom and hear me roar that are the restricted cards. I'm just going to double check that though. And we're on to uh, Matt's turn. What can Matt get out? He's got the King's Road, he's got a lot of gold here. You, you think he can pretty much play anything out he wants. So we have Igret, so now we've got some nice stealth on the board, which is going to make things even harder. A deep Fidela. Uh, so nightmares onto Cersei, so that's gonna that's gonna create some issues here for Lewis. Now he can't do two attacks without uh, with non leaning effects. Lewis so already thinks it's a game over. It's got a military of four coming in from uh, Jamie Lannister. Just gonna kill the crow killers. Just gonna get unopposed, and you got renowned. So. Matt has to be a little bit careful here because that's now 11 power. So yes, Hear Me Roar and Flea Bottom are both on the restricted list. So unfortunately that is, that, that is the, the illegal... Um, what makes this deck illegal, unfortunately. Probably fairly easy to do, because I think you probably just get rid of Flea Bottom, because you're hopefully winning, for that's come really comes a factor. <laughs> so an entry coming in from Jamie. He looks both thinking, yeah, I can't defend anyway, so might as well go for it. So that goes unopposed, then that goes up to 12, and then if he wins the power challenge, that would um, that would put him over the edge? Clay? No. What's he on? Brain kicking. He's on 11. Wins this 12. Wins the, if the power challenge. If the power challenge is also unopposed, then that would be game. So Matt has to be careful. He can't let both these challenges go unopposed, otherwise he has lost. At the same time, obviously, he wants to put the pressure on, but you can still win the military challenge, kill both of them, and then nearly your faction card and claim power. But he's not going to risk it, he's going to oppose it. Got a card for claim, which is the Weirwood Bow, this went back to hand. And a power challenge for eight, as they might as well go for it now. I think Matt probably lets us go unopposed. I'm just trying to do the maths again. So uh, crossing unopposed. So the only thing you got to be worried about is if there is a superior claim in hand. But in all fairness, even though there's a superior claim, there's not enough strength out there to stop the superior claim from triggering because it's an eight strength power challenge. 
So if Della, is a, Della, if Della defends this, she does not would not stop that from winning the game. So let's so say we're on 11, uh, crossing 12, claim 13, unopposed 14. But he's going to oppose it. So he doesn't have superior claim. And that gets Lewis up to third. Lewis up to Lewis, Lewis, Lewis up to thirteen power. And there's going to be a military coming in. Nil the faction card. Make it nil the nil the faction card to. Nope, trying to see if you can jump anything with Flea Boss and take a claim, but nope, both of them are dead. Nil the faction card to take power, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, only one power has been taken off for claims, should be two. And Dom goes to. Oh, so she should be on nine power, he's on ten. But I don't think at this point it's going to make too much more difference. Uh, you know, the board's been wiped, the, the power's on the other side. I'm pretty sure he doesn't run a reset from when I played him in the first game because I was really worried about the reset every turn and then when I realized it wasn't going to be a reset I just went for it because <coughs> um, you know you get to that point where you're like well, if you've not reset the ball by now there can't be a reset so you win or you die into I still can't tell damn you Matt so I assume um Lewis, uh, Lou's going to go first here. Lewis is going to go first. So we've got five gold plus lots of reducing things. Can he get that? Well, should be six power, but five power to win the game. So lots of things knelt, so hopefully something good could hit in the board. And I can't remember the name, but I know she is a fray. She is... There's some more money being spent, so looks like another character's going to hit the board. Nope, it's the the minor. This one, we discard a card and draw a card. Uh, Jennifer, after you win a challenge, which Jennifer is attacking, if you if it's the first challenge you initiated this phase, won't be. The losing player discards one card at random from their hand. Two cards are said if you control another attacking Cray character. So yeah, that's not going to do much, unfortunately. <laughs> So we've got um, God damn these bloody wilding characters. Uh, the one who gets to change his shape is the shit. The um, you know at the start of each oh, phase. God damn it. <laughs> We have uh, six skins. Is it Var Varmir six skins? No. The one who at the start of the phase, at the start of the phase, you choose one. You either take the form of the bear, eagle, cat, or wolf, and it gives you plus five strength, or an intrigue icon, insight, or a power icon in stealth, or intimidate and plus two strength. <laughs> so we've got Flea Bossom to bring in a Burman, and the Burman are going to come in for a strength for one military. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's going to be opposed, and the uh, I can't remember which one, which one I didn't say are, but they are killed anyway. They're the ones if your opponent has more gold in the house card, they get plus strength. And it's two claims, so the Duper Deli is gone. Well, we have a power challenge coming in. It's not the third challenge, there's less yet to worry about, but obviously there could be a surprise here in me, Raw, maybe. Get another character into play. <laughs> So it's this two claim power, obviously. So that would put twelve uh, good one of his thirteen. Uh, obviously, there's the fear of superior claim again. So I think potentially you do have to defend this, at least at least token defence. And it's not. And I suppose a claim of two, so no superior claim. So two more power to get. This is why I, that's why one of the reasons I like leave my tokens in front of front of me on the board. Uh, as you'll play as you'll see, so I can see how much I got left. Gives me a reminder, I'm not digging around in a bag. So you've got military, stealthing, probably the burn men, which goes unopposed, two claim. Kneel the house card and make it power, I imagine. Yeah. And then, and then go in for a power challenge, which should be unopposed. Oh, this is the intrigue, sorry. Doesn't make sense. Oh, you could, well, it doesn't really. I guess you should do it for the unopposed. The, oh, the mountain. That could. See, I, oh, if you had the mountain hand, I think he should have gone in there because that could have swung the game. You are completely relying on the top deck. But if that top deck comes up your way, you have potentially just. Um, you potentially have killed a load of characters um, that could have got him back in. I don't know if it would have done enough, obviously, even with the two claim and the pillage hit. Um, what we'd be looking at here, there'd still have been two characters on the board. But it seems better than what's her face. Uh, another Burman put in the discard pile. Uh, 15 minutes left of the round, I shout out my Martin, but I don't think this game's going to take that much longer. So we have Winds of Winter into Heads and Spikes. Uh, it's a character, so that's two more power. So um, Louis doing a very good job here of uh, keeping this close. Uh, well, one of his cards is a Queen Cersei, and she's dead, so that's not a good draw. Double checking that she's dead. So he's going to discard. Yep, discard Cersei, draw a card. Has he got anything he can play out? So we have an ocean road brought into play. We have um, old bones, just just marshaled rather than uh, anything else. So we've never best against my family. So it would have been worth bringing old bones out of shadows just to uh, just nail the faction card. Uh, so the only real character to play out there is Tyrion, which is going to do. Uh, 
And Matt's asking, because obviously he gets to the cards, is the hound dead? Which one says yes, so there's no point bringing the hound in there. He's a brilliant one to get in, the, uh, get in their bottom five because you bring him into play, you use him, he jumps back to your hand. I think that's Matt's speaking. So a little bit, a little bit of a rule query here because uh, six skins, six skins should have triggered before um, never gets my family, and Matt just like, Matt doesn't mind. I think when you're up by this much, it doesn't really matter, does it? So we have uh, uh, so the bad member or team, which is going to be the military is going to be defended. And we're going to do a power challenge stuff in Daria. <laughs> which will get up to could be unopposed so unopposed and claim uh, it's getting a bit messy but I think that's 13 power and those guys are about to die <laughs> Another shoes goes unopposed. Don't know why she's not knelt. And then you're going to do power of the with the uh, with the faction card Neil. Obviously, ready knelt got to stand up last turn. And that's it. So uh, Lewis calls it because he clearly can't stop at this point. And good game, guys. Uh, unlucky Lewis. Uh, well, very well played, Matt. And uh, guys, thanks very much for watching. Come back next time for the top eight game, which I believe has Lannister uh, Faith Militant. And it's a very interesting deck. Um, anyway, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. And as always, it has been emotional.